All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting a 10 by 10 inch Alla Prima oil painting of Marshall Point in Maine. So this is kind of a complicated scene. We've got architecture, there's a building, and then there's this walkway with a bunch of railings and cast shadows. So there's a lot of information. This is a small panel, it's a 10 by 10. What I'm going for is a convincing feeling of light. So in order to prevent myself from getting too detail oriented, I'm using a brush that is kind of a struggle. It's too big for the job, or at least I feel like it is. It's a number six natural bristle flat, but it's totally worn down. It's in terrible condition. Uh, so I'm using sort of a clumsy tool so that I can't get too bogged down in detail. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting by toning the panel with some burnt sienna, and I've just thinned the burnt sienna with odorless mineral spirits, scrubbed it on there, and then wiped it off with a paper towel just to give the panel a warm tint. And now I'm doing my sketch, and I'm just breaking the thing down into simple shapes, like the dark trees in the background, and the walkway in the foreground, the house, and then the surrounding grass. Just trying to keep it simple, I'm looking for proportions. In other words, like on the right-hand side of the house to the edge of the panel or the edge of the photo, what's that space look like? How big is it? How far is the peak of the roof from the top of the panel? Also, sometimes I'll strike a line down the center of the front of the building and then to make sure that it looks symmetrical. Um, and obviously sketching in the trees there. Not gonna put a lot of uh, detail into the walkway, but I do wanna suggest the shadow shapes. Uh, and now I'm working dark to light. Um, the trees and, and some of the shadows are the darkest part, so I'm putting in those first with some ultramarine and a bit of yellow and burnt sienna. Um, now establishing the pattern, uh, shadow pattern on the building. And I'm squinting at it and I'm just looking at it as shapes. And I can't get too fussy because this brush is really in horrible condition. I have very little control, which is good because I didn't want to get too precious or careful with it. I wanted it to be, I wanted to be limited so that I wouldn't get bogged down in details. Um, so yeah, establishing shadow patterns and now coming in with that, the warm grass that's in the sunlight. I still, I forgot to put the shadow in on the uh, dark side of the building. But again, just kind of trying to cover the panel with color, and then I can start making further adjustments. I'm not using any medium at all. I'm just, um, because I want the paint to kind of go on thick, uh, so I'm thinning it a bit when necessary with odorless mineral spirits. Okay, so now I'm coming in with some of the warm colors here, the walkway. Uh, I just mixed up a warm gray and now just experimenting with the shadows too. I can see already the shadows on the railing are lighter than the shadows that are on the walkway itself. So I'll need to adjust that. Um, you know, I can see that that's not correct at this point. But anyway, I'm still just getting the shadow pattern established and squinting at this and just trying to suggest it. I'm not trying to get an accurate representation of the, you know, the actual carpentry. I want, I want a feeling of light and I want it, I just want to suggest um, enough detail so that the viewer can fill in the blanks. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then also too, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll work negative space, uh, sh negative shapes to define the positive shapes, like in the shadow that's cast by the walkway on the ground there. I, you know, I came in and put the light portions, um, you know, between the railings, I put that on afterwards. Uh, little details like the windows really help. And, you know, again, just coming in with some of those warm colors, I, I noticed that in the shadow side of the building, there was some cerulean, so I put that in there. Again, looking for color shifts in the shadow areas. One of the things I um, uh, struggled with or, you know, question was whether I was going to put the rocks in, in, you know, or how I was going to do that, but I'm glad I did. I think it breaks up the green nicely. And... Um, Okay, so I've put the white in. The camera went off. I already put the white in on the front of the building. Again, just kind of putting it on thick and not being too careful about it. Again, focusing on shapes. Uh, one thing I'll mention is the top of the trees. I kind of fuss with the top of the trees. Um, you know, when you're painting in a loose fashion, you don't want to get into the, you know, putting all the little branches in, but you still want it to look like trees. 
So that can be a challenge. So I tend to go back and forth where the sky meets the top of the trees. That's a typical thing when I'm doing a landscape. Always a challenge. Putting in the dormers right now, I'm realizing now as I look at this that I, I probably should have left the dormers out. My rule of thumb is when I'm painting something, if I'm fussing over a detail and I can't get it, um, I'll just leave it out, you know, uh, if it's not absolutely necessary. And in this case, I don't think they really are. It's, they're barely visible anyway. So that's what I would do. I would paint those out. Well, I did a bit of cleanup after the time lapse stopped. Not much. Uh, just kind of cleaned up the geometry on the building and also in particular the step the steps here put a little bit of suggested railings in there uh, Did not get out the small brush. I did stick with that um, worn out brush that I was using and Yeah, I also put some of the shadows in on the steps as well Just squinting and trying to break it down into uh, simple shapes of light and shadow I left the dormers in for now and I can paint them out later you know, as I'm looking at it in real life, I feel like this walkway reads more, uh, more authentic or more real than if I'd gone in and put every bit of carpentry in there and all the details with a fine brush. I think what ends up happening is the message becomes like, look how complicated this is, when what I was really interested in was the light. So I think by suggesting the surrounding elements that the the light on the walkway really becomes the subject and that's what was interesting to me so that's why i'm you know i'm not sure why to me it looks more real and it has a feeling of there's there's a feeling of truth and reality to it that i, I like i said i don't think that i would have gotten if i had been really you know careful and focusing on those details this was an eye-opener for me. I do this occasionally. I will paint like a landscape using a brush that is just, like I said, clumsy. It's just not, it feels, uh, you know, it just forces me to eliminate detail. That's kind of an uncomfortable process sometimes, but I'm always surprised at the results. It always seems like a scene that's suggested just seems more real than one that's bogged down with details. Um, but as you guys probably know, if you try to paint loose and suggestively, it's really difficult. It's really difficult. So I found myself, you know, reminding myself to squint, just squint and eliminate detail. Just look at shapes. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, big thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is the Patreon support that keeps me going with these videos. Link in description if you want more info about that. Um, and other than that, just stay creative and I will see you guys in the next video.